Today is all about family favorites for Easter. Hey y'all, I'm Sammy and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be sharing some of the best Easter recipes or springtime recipes or just whatever you want to make them because <laughs> they are that good. And I really hope you enjoy this because today is super extra special because it is a part of a huge collab hosted by myself and Valerie just for Easter. Can y'all believe it? Can you believe it's already Easter? I can't, but I hope that you enjoy today's video. And if you are coming over from one of the other ladies channels, hello and welcome. I'm so, so happy to have you here. I really hope you enjoy today's video. If you do, make sure you give me a big old thumbs up because I know these recipes are gonna be spectacular. Also, just make sure you go and show all the other lovely ladies who have joined in some much deserved love because they are wonderful. And make sure you check in my description box because I will have all the links listed down below for the playlist as well as Valerie's channel. So y'all make sure y'all go show her some love as well. And thank you so much, Valerie, for hosting with me. Now, sit back and relax. Go get you some sweet tea and let me do all the cooking. Come on, y'all. Let's go. So when I think of Easter, I definitely think of an Easter ham. And this is my favorite way to make it. And yes, it's done in a crock pot. So I've got about two and a half pounds of sliced up ham right here. And all I'm going to do is kind of just pull it apart just a little bit. And kind of just tear it down or push it down into the crock pot and I know this might sound like a weird combination but this coca-cola really tenderizes that ham and it gives it awesome flavor now depending on the size of your ham you might need the full 12 ounces but I'm going to use about half I have a 15.25 ounce can of pineapple rings. We're going to use about half of those as well. I'm just going to kind of put a couple on the top and about two of them on the side. And now we're going to take that pineapple juice as well. Probably about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup. Like I said, this is for two and a half pound ham. I will, however, have my full recipe linked down in my description box where I share how to make it for a family gathering and then we're just going to take our little pineapples and put those around as well just to make it look pretty but it does add so much flavor y'all now we just put our lid on and this is going to cook on low for this size ham we want to cook it for about two to four hours because it's already fully cooked we just want to let those flavors combine this ham is also cooked up perfectly it is going to be so full of flavor and so tender. I cannot wait to dig into this. Plus it's pretty, you gotta admit. And now for this delicious ham. Would you look at this goodness right here? Oh my goodness, this is so, so good. Now this one might be a little bit less traditional for Easter supper, but it's one of our favorites. So let's get to making my barbecued baked beans. So in our skillet, I have a pound of ground beef. We're gonna add about one cup of diced up onions. We're gonna give it a little bit of a season with some nature's seasoning. And once this gets brown, that's when all the magic starts happening. Now that we have that ground beef seasoned up, we're gonna add in about a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. We are also adding in about a half a cup of light brown sugar. We're gonna give that a quick stir just to make sure that brown sugar gets mixed in well. Now we're gonna throw in about a cup to a cup and a half of lima beans. I just used the frozen ones. We'll give that a quick stir so they can start that cooking process. 
Next, we'll add in about a tablespoon of Badia Complete, three tablespoons of mustard, about one cup of ketchup, one to one and a half cups, I should say, and about three tablespoons of your favorite barbecue sauce. I'm using the Kinder's Mild Barbecue Sauce because it is the best next to G. Hughes. I love G. Hughes Barbecue Sauce, the sugar-free one, but this one is really good too. Next, we're gonna add one 15.25 ounce can of drained and rinsed black beans and one 15.25 ounce can of Great Northern Beans. I did drain those. And last but not least, we're gonna add in one 28 ounce can of brown sugar hickory baked beans. Now you can use Bush's baked beans or whatever baked beans you like. These are just as good, fraction of the price. Also, per your taste, you could add more barbecue sauce or more brown sugar, whatever you want to add to it, that will be fine. This is just the base of my beans. Also, at this point, you'll wanna add in about one cup of the fully cooked bacon pieces or you could fry up your own and cut it up. This is needed 100%. Now just make sure you mix those well. Let's give these beans a stir. They've been cooking for about an hour now. As you can see, it has made a good amount of sauce in there. That is exactly what you want. So we're just gonna put these down on low and just let them finish simmering the rest of the day. Because like I said, the longer they simmer, the better they are. But these are so good. And these beans cooked up perfectly. So good, so rich, full of flavor. You got the sweet, you've got the savory. It is the perfect combination. Now, I don't know about you all, but when I think of Easter, I think potato salad seasons here. So let's go ahead and make my famous tater salad. So in a large mixing bowl, I have five pounds of red skin potatoes. I do leave the skin on mine, but you don't have to if you don't like it. Um, I just think it adds more color to it, plus you have the vitamins from there. But I have already boiled them and they are in the bowl, ready to go. Next, we are gonna add about one and a half to two cups of mayonnaise. Now we're gonna add in about a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar. You could use apple cider vinegar if you want to. I just don't really care for apple cider vinegar that much. We're gonna add in about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of black pepper, about an eighth to a quarter cup of sugar, about a half a cup of onions diced up. And I do use the sweet Vidalia onions in this. Now, we're gonna add in some sweet relish. I'm gonna use about a half a cup to a cup, just depending on how much y'all like. Next, we're gonna add in six diced up hard boiled eggs and just a touch of mustard, about a tablespoon. Now we'll just give this a good old mix together until everything is combined. Now that that is mixed together, all we're gonna do is just smooth that right on out We'll just add a little bit of paprika right to the top and a few freeze dried chives. Now isn't that just pretty as a picture right there? And it sure does taste good too. We'll just cover this up, put it right on in the fridge until it's ready for supper. Here is this delicious potato salad. You cannot go wrong with it. It is absolutely amazing, must try. Of course, you gotta get a little bit of a taste going. This is so good, y'all. Now, everybody knows you gotta have some creamy mac and cheese for any holiday supper. So we're gonna go ahead and make this one right on in the crock pot. So into a seven quart sprayed crock pot, we are gonna dump in 16 ounces of par cooked noodles. They've been cooked to al dente. 
We are gonna add in six tablespoons of cubed up butter and we're gonna stir that together until everything melts. I am also gonna add in my pepper, about a teaspoon and about a half a teaspoon of salt because I'm using salted butter. Now we're just gonna stir that until that butter is melted. Now we're gonna take a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk right over to the top. We're gonna add in a half a cup of whole milk, two cups of half and half, eight ounces of cubed up Velveeta, and three and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheeses. I'm using a white New York sharp and just a yellow extra sharp. We're gonna save the other half a cup to put right on the top of it when it's almost done cooking. Now we're just gonna stir this and blend it all together. Put our lid on it. And this is gonna cook on low for two to three hours. All right, y'all, so this has cooked the two hours and I kind of come around to about an hour and a half into it, or an hour actually, about half the cook time, and I kind of stirred it around the edges because I noticed it was browning. But now we're just gonna top it with the remaining half a cup of cheese. And then we'll just let this get all ooey gooey and melty, all the good words. Mo cheese, mo better. <laughs> so we're just gonna let this get happy and melt on down. All right, y'all, here is this mac and cheese. It is still sizzling and it is going to be perfect. Ooey, gooey, and cheesy. So, so good. Now this might just be a simple old pasta salad, but I'm telling y'all, it's gonna become your new favorite for any family get together. Let's get to making my bacon and ranch pasta salad. So I have already cooked and drained 16 ounces of elbow macaroni. We're gonna put in some salt and pepper to taste. Generally, it's about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. We're also gonna come in with about two tablespoons of ranch seasoning or just one packet. Add in a half a cup of chopped up cooked bacon or you can just use the bacon pieces like I do. Now I have a half a cup of red onion diced up, one cup of cucumbers diced up, and a cup of diced up red Roma tomatoes. We're gonna go ahead and give that a good mix through, and then we'll add in our mayonnaise, and last will be the cheese. Now, if someone in your family can't have a certain vegetable that I put in here, you can leave it out. If someone can't have the mayonnaise, you could always substitute it for um, a plain Greek yogurt. Either way would be just fine. Now, I always start off with about a cup of mayonnaise, just to see where I'm at. Now, that looks just about perfect. We're gonna come in with one cup of finely shredded cheddar cheese. And we'll just mix this until well combined. All right, now that it is mixed through, you want to go ahead and give your pasta a taste just to make sure everything is well combined and seasoned. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Y'all have to make this, trust me on it. Now this does pair perfectly with your Easter ham, or it also goes well with steaks or grilled chicken, whatever, this is gonna be your new favorite side dish. I feel like it's definitely not Easter unless you have banana pudding, so we're getting ready to make my triple layer banana pudding. In our mixing bowl, I then took one package of banana cream and one package of vanilla, and I mixed that per the pudding directions on the box. So it's one vanilla, one banana, pudding packet and then four cups of cold milk and I just put that in the fridge so it's already set. Now we're going to take eight ounces of sour cream and add that into this bowl. Same for the whipped topping. We're going to take eight ounces of this and put it right on in there. Now we're just going to fold this until well combined. 
Now that this is well combined together and you don't see any more streaks running through there, we'll set it aside and we'll start putting the cookies and the banana pudding together. So into a number 13 bacon dish, I just like to start out with a layer of the Chessman butter cookies. Next, we're gonna add a layer of our pudding mixture. Now I found that the easiest thing to do is just to kind of let it flow over the top. That way the cookies don't move around too terribly much. And then I just smooth out that layer as best as I can. Now this is where I do it a little bit differently than everyone else does. I crush up my Nilla wafers and I make a layer of the crushed Nilla wafers. Next, we're gonna add our second layer of pudding. Now we layer on our last layer of the Chessman cookies. And if you've noticed, I don't put my bananas in the pudding because they get, you know, not so pleasant in the pudding. So I slice them up on top as I serve it. That way the bananas always stay fresh. Now the remaining of the pudding goes right on top. Last but not least, we're gonna put the rest of our whipped cream on top of this. And then we're just gonna spread that on out and we're gonna to top it with the rest of the crushed up vanilla wafers. Here is this loveliness. It is so good. Y'all have to give this one a try. Now, no holiday supper would be complete without some good old deviled eggs, but I like to call mine dilly eggs. So let's get to making them. So I've already halved my eggs and got my egg yolks all crumbled up. What we're going to do is take about a teaspoon of dill weed. Now we're going to take about two tablespoons of mustard. If you don't like mustard in your deviled eggs, please leave it out. It'll be just fine. And of course, about a half a teaspoon of pepper and about a pinch of salt. Now keep in mind, if you don't want the dill in your egg, you could put sweet relish, but now we're gonna add in about three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. And then I'd like to say, man, these gonna be good. <laughs> we're just gonna give this a good stir together. Now we have got this mixed up nicely. I don't know if you can see the dill through it, but y'all, these are seriously the best deviled eggs. Mm, I love them. Now, the easiest way I've always found to fill my eggs is just to put this mixture right on into a Ziploc bag and snip that end off, and then you can get all fancy with filling your eggs. So we've got that end snipped off. I'm just gonna go ahead and start from the center and swirl it and just make it look as pretty as you want. Now we'll just put a little sprinkle of dill right over the top of them. And of course, some paprika. Now, aren't these just beautiful? They taste just as good as they look. This quick and simple broccoli salad will definitely be a hit and the most easiest side dish you've ever made. I went ahead and chopped up three um, smaller size broccoli crowns just into these bite-sized pieces. And we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and get our dressing made up real quick. Into a mixing bowl, I got about a cup and a half of mayonnaise. We're gonna add two and a half tablespoons of white distilled vinegar and a third of a cup of sugar. We're gonna go ahead and get this a good mix together and then we'll set it aside and we'll start putting everything else into our broccoli. So to our broccoli, we're gonna go ahead and add in some sunflower seeds. I know a lot of recipes don't call for this, but I'm probably gonna put about a half a cup of sunflower seeds in there. We're gonna throw in a half a cup of chopped up bacon, a half a cup of chopped up red onion, one and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese, and about a cup now that we've got everything in the bowl, we're gonna go ahead and pour our dressing right over the top and give it a good mix together. Now, since we've got this mixed together, we're just gonna go put our lid on it and let it sit for at least 30 minutes. I'm gonna bring you in close for a little bit just so y'all can see this deliciousness and it's even better 
once it's cold and has set for a little bit so all those flavors can meld together. Look at all this yumminess right here. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait for it to just sit here and meld all those flavors together. I'm hungry, y'all, can you tell? I know this cranberry apple crisp will soon become your new family favorite. Let's get it put together. So to start off, you just wanna go ahead and peel, core, and thinly slice all your apples. Our apples sliced very thin, not very thin. I like a little meat to my apples. <laughs> so I left them a little bit thicker, but they are um, sliced on up. So we're gonna go ahead and start dumping everything in. Now we're gonna dump in a quarter cup of whole cranberries, a fourth of a cup of white sugar. I know that might sound like a lot, but you need them for those tart cranberries one tablespoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg. And we're just gonna give these a toss together and I'm gonna get out an eight by eight square baking dish. So we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna get out another little bowl and we're gonna make the crisp topping. So we're gonna add in a third a cup of quick cooking oats, a third a cup of white flour, a half a cup of light brown sugar packed, now we're gonna take a fourth a cup of butter and we're gonna cut that in there together. So we've got that mixed together. Now we're gonna come in with our walnuts. I just crushed them up a little bit in a Ziploc bag. We're gonna fold that into it and then we're gonna get the crisp put over top of the apples and cranberries. We've got our baking dish here. I've got it sprayed. So what we're gonna do is take our cranberry and apple mixture. That's gonna get poured straight on in there. Make sure you get all of those yummy apples out. And now we're gonna take all of this topping and we're gonna put it right over the top. Now this is gonna go into a 375 degree oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. So just keep an eye on it. And here is that crisp deliciousness right here. It smells amazing and I know it is going to be absolutely delicious. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I truly, truly hope you enjoyed it. And I just wanna say a huge, huge thank you to Valerie for helping me co-host today's video and for all the other lovely creators and ladies who have joined in to make this Easter collaboration so very special to me. Y'all are truly the best. Until next time, if you are in need of prayer, please let me know below and I would be honored to pray for you all. And until next time, if you need some more meal inspirations, make sure you check out these other two videos and I wish you nothing but the very best. God bless. Bye. Today is all about my favorite of all time Easter recipes. Today is all about family favorites. No. I might get this right eventually. I'm trying to do this before work and I've got four minutes before I have to leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You've got this. You've got this. Whoop, whoop. You've got this. A little pick me up before. Okay.